uh, the people over at the Future Fiction Academy are using and loving right now, including interesting models like uh, this one down here called Mytho Max. There's Mytho Mist, Mytho Max. My uh, people love Mytho Max. <laughs> just they just do. They uh, at the uh, inside the FFA. They really do. And then you've got your favorites, which you can add your own favorites to it. I have some favorites that I've already added in here. And I'm pretty sure I can show you where that is. But I can add any of my favorites right in here and change it to that. I am partial to Gemini Pro 1.5 right now. I like it because it has huge context. Right here, you can change your temperature. You can change your output limit. This is fun. So your output limit can go from a little measly 64 tokens all the way up to 16,000 tokens. Pretty sure there are several big models like Sonnet and GPT-4 that actually uses all of those. So we're gonna have an output of about, we're gonna go with 2000, we're gonna keep it at that. If you wanted to change the actual color of your particular thing, you can change it from light to dark mode. You could change it back to light mode, or you can change it to emerald, which has a very subtle change to it. Corporate, which is really, really basic. Garden, and so on and so forth. We're gonna go back with light, and we're gonna go over here. This is where you configure all of your settings. You also set your favorite models. Let's look at all of the settings that are behind the scenes, the, the actual underpinnings of Raptorite. These are the underpinnings. There is no system prompt because they want you to be able to give your own system prompt do so that you can make Raptorite act exactly like you want to. This, y'all, this is funny. This thing is basically a ad hoc GPT builder. You can put a system prompt in there and then you can add documents in the document section and then you can toggle those documents on so that it uses those documents as the context. It's pretty friggin' cool. All right, now that you've done all of this, now you can see all of this. You see that you can put your own prompt in. You see that it has, when you are doing just the continue, that means you're hitting the slash button and it's just continuing your text. It says, continue the story below without repeating the story unless it is for literary effect. Include all of the text you are adding. You should read what it is before the tag and match the same style and tone. Let me see here. What does it say? Include only the text you are adding. You should read what is before the tag and match the same style and tone so the next text fits into the narrative properly. That means it's looking back at what you wrote. So you could probably put a, a decent amount of your own writing in and it will continue that same style and tone and can and uh, complete whatever the size context you have uh, given it. It'll complete that context and uh, write what you want. You should be able to read the tag before and match the same style. It's so exciting. Now, once you do that, you go down to revise, and if you highlight everything, it says here, read the passage and revise it using instructions found inside the brackets. This is the brackets I was telling you about. So you put the brackets on, and it will just do those instructions. And then it'll pop up another window, and you can add even more instructions if you wanted to, to determine what text you use to replace those instructions. It's pretty, it's so powerful. So you can do whatever you want. You could actually highlight these and change these completely to do whatever you want and kind of create a little machine. So, so the system prompt helps uh, create the persona for what you want to do. You're a New York editor or something like that, and you're writing science fiction or fantasy or something specifically, or you're even just trying to do blog posts and things like that. Then you can set up your system prompt to do whatever you want. You can change your continue prompt. You can change your revise prompt to do whatever you want. And then you've got this multi-layered way of dealing with maybe stuff that you've already written, which is 
super powerful, incredibly powerful. It makes my imagination pop off. You've configured your prompts. Here are your favorite models, and it'll pop out all of the models that you want, and then you just tick off the boxes of the ones that you like. You're hunky-dory. Like, say I'm into this one, and uh, I also like Phi Medium, or and I really love that Mistral 7B, or Codestral Mon Mamba, or something like that. All right, so I've got all of these. They're all in there. Then I save. I can click out, and now I'm back in, and I have all of my models that my favorites and I've modified them and I've added a couple of them to it. It's done. You you now have full power and full control over everything. You've saved all of your settings right here. You can even change the hotkey. So maybe you don't want that to be the backslash. Maybe you want it to be the front slash or the F1 or something like that. Or maybe you don't want it to be equal. Maybe you want it to be insert or something like that. So you can change that. Utilities, you can show the last sort of thing that was generated, all of the underlying and underpinnings of everything, all of the, you'll see here it says extra whimsy right there. It has the outline start. It has to read this passage and revise with the bracket. And then you've got your brackets right here and then it actually changes that thing. It's pretty slick, this program. This is free. Let me show you one other really cool thing. These all exist, these projects all exist in the memory of your browser. If you want to use multiple things in context, so you're working on a longer piece and you want it to know what scene you're working on, you can either have a document that is just about that scene or you can have it use your whole like really fleshed out outline as context in order to create whatever this is. You're done with all of these. You've got your, all your context, you've finished, and you've got all of these documents. You want to drop them into pages or vellum, or you want to export them to Notion, or you want to do something like that. So you're going to go up to your upper right hand corner, and you'll see here it says download current document, download all documents. That means separately. So there'll be one for synopsis, one for a poem, one, all of these things. Download the story as one document. So you could download it in three different ways. Let's say I download download all documents, they will download separately as separate little documents, not as a zip file. If you click on the whole story, it'll download as one document. So let's say I want to download. It says, would you like to download as markdown or plain text? And I say, I want to do, I want to do it as markdown. I like markdown. Sometimes plain text is fine. It just sometimes loses your formatting. Uh, so it's your choice. Also, this right up here gives you the opportunity to change the size of your text. So say I'm an old man, which I am, and I need to be able to read this, which I do. I now have a bigger text to do that. As you can see, this is a basic functionality with all of the text things you need. You can cut, you can copy, you can paste, you can bold text, underline, I mean, uh, italics, underline. And yeah, you can strike through. And then say you've highlighted something more detail. This is just an easy way to do this. I'm gonna highlight this. If I hit the backspace button, don't add any instructions, and then it creates more, right? It's working with Sonnet right now, and it's creating more. If I, if I don't like it, then I can go up here and hit the down button, and I can remove the marked text. If I do like it, I can confirm, which is the same thing as equal. And those are the functions. That's it. There is a rerun button, so you can actually rerun this entire sequence. Uh, it wrote this stuff out, but I don't like it. I could hit this button and it would rewrite it again. There, and now it's back to the original because I didn't like any of that stuff. Even though I reran it, it took it all the way back to the original, even all the way up to the more details <laughs> right there. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole program right there in 
a nutshell, a comprehensive walkthrough of Raptor Right. My name is Ikello Herod. This has been the Future Fiction Factory. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because YouTube likes to YouTube. And I will see you in the next video.